What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome to my channel. So today I'm really, really excited to share a new pretty cool set of tools that are provided by Meta. These tools include the new Meta Haptic Studio, the Meta Haptic Studio Companion app, which I'm gonna show you today, and also the Meta Haptic SDK for Unity and also Unreal. But what do these tools do exactly, you might ask, right? Well, these tools are great because they give designers and also developers like us much more control over haptics and therefore potentially increasing the level of immersion of their apps or games. You can create haptic clips with Haptic Studio, which can then be integrated into your own applications through the Haptics SDK. These clips provide controlled vibrations according to the vibration pattern that is stored in the generated haptic files. So what devices support the Meta Haptics SDK, you may ask? Well, Meta provides support for the Quest 2, Quest Pro, and the recently released Quest 3 device. Also know that the motors that produce the vibrations between each controller varies depending on the controller type. However, the SDK handles this seamlessly to make sure that the Meta Haptics SDK is backward and also forward compatible. Well, enough said, let's go ahead and jump into my computer and start working on it. The first thing that I wanna do is I wanna show you an experience that I updated to be able to test to see how easy it was going to be to integrate the Meta Haptics SDK. As you guys can see from this experience, I have a canvas and the canvas is showing you the haptics that are currently playing depending on the sound effect. I decided to use this experience because there's just a lot of music. There is also a lot of sound effects that are playing when I open a portal, when I close a portal, when the creature goes and picks up a ball, which you're using basically to feed the creature. So there's just a lot of things that are happening in here. But at the same time, this experience allowed me to understand how the workflow was gonna be like, how do we export those files, how do we import them into the Meta Haptic Studio, how do we get them out of the Meta Haptic Studio and import them into Unity, how does Unity know how to play them? So I'm gonna show you all about that, but first, let's go ahead and start by jumping into installing some of the tools. All right guys, so the first thing that you gotta do is let's go ahead and download the Meta Haptic Studio for Windows. And then if you have a Mac, that's also available for Mac. Just click on Agree and then Download. Once it downloads, we can install it on our desktop. In my case, I just double click on it. Once it finishes installing, we can just run it. And this is where we're gonna be spending a lot of time designing haptics. So on the top right, you're gonna see No Connected and that means that we need to install the companion app, which is called the Meta Haptic Studio. That's what's going to be running natively on your VR device. In my case, I'm going to install it on the Quest 3. Once it finishes installing, just go ahead and launch it on your VR headset, and then you're going to be ready for the next part. And I'm feeling the vibrations as this, each one of these clips plays. This is really cool, it's really cool. It's not like a constant vibration. It basically uses the audio to detect what the vibration pattern has to be. And that's what you see right here on this side. So if I go back, let's go ahead and look at one of the samples. And this is gonna be basically how to get started. This will be the thing that I would say look at first. So this is gonna be a tutorial that is built into the Meta Haptic Studio, which is really cool. You don't have to go and read a tutorial. You can just watch my video and then just follow along. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit start. So when you hit start, it's gonna walk you through basically some of the theory, some of the theory that I'm still learning. So I don't know everything, but I'm gonna be learning as we go. So if I go next, it's gonna tell you here what it's going to allow you to do. Basically, you're going to be importing audio files into this tool, and then either a designer, either a developer is going to be able to edit some of the curve values in here that are, that are going to generate different vibrations on the controller, so there's a motor inside of this, and then the motor has different options that you can engage to, you can integrate into, and those are gonna be some of these ones, right? Amplitude, emphasis, and frequency. I think Meta calls them envelopes, so there's going to be an amplitude envelope, there's going to be an emphasis envelope, there's going to be a frequency envelope. The other thing to know though, amplitude is going to be more of a continuous change in the vibration. Frequency is going to be the speed that the vibration executes. So think of it as a, you know, a motor. So when you turn on the motor in your car, it's going to be consistently. And then when you press on the accelerator, that's when the frequency is going to be kicking in. 
And then any moment in time where you want that emphasis, that acceleration to happen, you know, really, really strong, you push towards the accelerator, that's what emphasis is gonna be taken into place. So hopefully that kind of makes sense in your head. That makes sense in my head. So just, you know, explain it that way. So if I go next, you're gonna see that this is the Quest Pro controller. Also the Quest 3 controller is supported. So these are just some of the controllers that are supported. You can also use the actual Quest 2 controllers, but the motors on those are not as detailed as the motors that are on these two devices, on these controllers. So just keep that in mind. And then, but the SDK will allow you to basically work with the older version of the controllers, the newer version of the controllers. So they support Quest 2 and then Quest 3 and also the Quest Pro. Okay, let me go ahead and keep and go next. So if this happens, that means that you need to go into the basically the getting started area in here and we're gonna go into the amplitude. So the idea is that this tutorial here, you're going to be going through on the headset at the same time that you're going through with the Meta Haptic Studio. So right now I'm gonna go into the strong amplitude. So that's gonna be the first thing. There are three fundamental ways to control the motor that produces vibration and feedback. So like I said, there's gonna be amplitude, emphasis and frequency. And this is more of a constant, so the graph is all the way from the very beginning to a value of one. So it's gonna go all the way to the very end to the same value. So when I do and press the white button on the controller, I just feel a constant vibration. So this is very similar to how it works today without the Meta Haptic Studio. So if I go next, it's gonna tell you here what you need to press. You can also use the right controller to do this. So I'm using this one so you guys can see it on the top right side. And then you can also have a saddle amplitude. And if I do Y right now, it's gonna be a lot smaller, uh, basically a lower amplitude because the curve in here, well, there's no curve, it's flat, right? But the value it's about, well, it's 0 0.3. So it's gonna be a saddle because the other one was 100%. This is about 30% of the amplitude value. So if I do it again, it's just a very soft vibration. So if I do next, this is gonna be just a different curve, right? It's gonna start slow and then move all the way to the very top and then down. So imagine you're gonna feel the vibration really, really soft and then it's gonna kick in to the very top and then go back down and that's what I'm feeling. And then he explains to you in here what those mean. There's also something called detail modulation and a lot of these things are going to be generated automatically when we import this into the actual tool. So I'll walk you through more of those. So let's go ahead and hit next and then we'll keep looking at this. So you can also grab this point, right? If you don't want the vibration to be like too strong when it reaches that. So just just think about this is all, this is the entire clip and it's gonna go basically up to, up to this time. So if you wanna maybe like just have something really subtle and then press the Y button, you can feel it's gonna be saddled all the way across, starting at zero. And then you, know, you can also grab other points and then create other points, which is what this tells you here. So if I wanted to have it, maybe I don't want it to have it that you know slow on, at the very beginning. You can get a point in here and basically start it with a vibration. So when I hit Y, I feel the vibration as soon as, soon as it starts. And then it kind of stays there and then it basically goes down. So you can add as many points as you want in here and then I can add a point here, and then I can add another point in here, and then we can select multiple points, and I can adjust those points. You can also scale those points, which is really cool, so it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can also look at the timeline in here if I wanna look at half of that, maybe you wanna focus on that area, or I want to go you know, all the way through, so just very similar to the animation timelines on like Maya, Blender, and so on, and also in Unity. So just know that those are available. So if I hit next, it just tells you here, like play around with it, just like what we did. They just have a lot more points than I do. And then the next part is going to be introduction to frequency. So I recommend just tackling this on and then just hitting that white button. You're gonna feel that the motor is actually is changing and it's going a lot faster. So if I were to add a point maybe around here and then I'm gonna do Y, yeah, I can feel the motor going, going really, really fast as soon as it reaches that point. And then again, if I wanna just start really fast and do it, it's just really fast and it kinda like slows down to a normal speed. So the frequency is really, really helpful for that. And then you can see here's a low type frequency, so lower value versus a high value. So this one is gonna be a soft. 
and it's just a, a very soft. It's a little hotter on than the amplitude that we looked at before because we weren't really looking at frequency, but it's just, you know, it allows you to speed up the, the motors. And hopefully I'm saying things correctly, but you will be playing with this, so I'm sure that you'll notice kind of the same, you know, the same pattern, the same feeling on your hands when you're trying this out. So high frequency is just a very, very refined and very, very fast speed on the motors on your hands. And then this one is just modulation. It just explains to you the, the curve in here. We can also modulate the frequency envelope just like with the amplitude envelope. In this example, you can feel the frequency being swept from low to high. So yeah, and I can feel it. It's like a low vibration and then a very high vibration, but the speed changes on that vibration. Yeah, yeah. So it gives you a lot more control over haptics. So you can control these, you can move them down, you can move them up. And then when I hit Y, I basically feel like a heart beep as soon as it reaches this. So heart beep, heart beep, and then heart beep. So depending on how high it is, it's going to have more emphasis at that point in time. So if I go next, it's gonna basically tell you what, what I just showed you. You can change this, you can change that type of the curve. And then you can also edit it in here if you wanna just select the point. You can also just change the sharpness. That's what it's called actually, you know, the curve, the little curve in this area is basically the, the sharpness of the emphasis point. And then you can also change some of these ones. You can see that that's going to be changing in real time as I change it in here. So you can play with some of those things. And then if I go next, it, they just have different ones in here. I believe you can also do multiple. Yep, you can also do multiple. You can also scale them up, scale them down. So all of that works. And there's just different ones in here. There's a round, a normal, and also a sharp. And then, like I show you here, there's different shapes that you can select. So I'm gonna do next. And then another thing that you can also do though, if you're working with these, you know, with the amplitude, let's say that you wanna add an emphasis in here, you can just select that point and then go into edit. And then you can do emphasis and that's going to add emphasis. And then you can do just what I show you before. You can also use, you know, the key combinations in here with your keyboard. I have my mouse on the right, the control on the left, so I'm not gonna try that, but you get the idea. And then if I hit next, this is gonna be when you import an audio file, this is gonna be what it shows you as an analysis. So it's going to use the algorithm that they built to basically build the curve for you. And that's the idea. So you're using the algorithm with the audio files that you're importing, and then it's gonna give you a result like this. And then you can basically just use the analysis tool in here to change how it feels, how the vibration feels, how the frequency feels, what emphasis, emphasis points you want to add uh, to basically your audio wave. So that's the idea. So let me go ahead and play this one so you guys can, you know, hear it. So that's that's really cool. There's a lot of changes in the vibrations. So I can start playing with the game and that's a lot more vibration points. And there's just a lot of different fine motor changes as I am doing this. And that's because there's different points in here, there's different frequency there. In this case, there's really no emphasis because it's set to a zero, but you can increment it in here, right? Now there's emphasis points in this area and I, and I, and I feel it, I, I just really feel it. Another thing that you can do though, if you don't want the resolution to be as high, not to have these many points, you can always lower it down. All right guys, so this is the fun part of this tutorial and that is because we're going to be working in Unity and then using this project in here, which is was created by Imera and it's called The World Beyond. You might recognize it by looking at this cute character and it's been, you know, it's been a really fun little demo that was created to show how scene understanding works with Meta. You also get this little toy gun that you can shoot and you can collect balls and you can also open a portal. So we're gonna be basically getting into some of those sounds and then using those sounds to trigger haptics. So I'm really, really excited for this part of the video. So. Before we get going, let me show you what are some of the requirements that we're going to need. So if you go into developer.oculus.com, in this case, experimental, by the time that you watch this video, it will be in production. So you can basically download it from the package manager and looking at the meta scope, which I'm going to be putting that information in the description of this video. So if you wanna look at the production link, you can also do that and download it directly. That's also, going to work. So basically what you do is you click on the haptics SDK download 
And then that's going to give you an agreement here, a license that you have to agree on, and then just click on download, and it's going to download that. So if we go back just for a quick minute, I wanna show you some of the prerequisites. So like I said before, you're gonna need a Quest 2, a Quest Pro, and or a Quest 3 headset. You're also going to, it's going to be paired with these controllers like I mentioned before. Unity version, you're gonna need Unity 2020, the 3.26 or above. I'm going to be, things are changing rapidly with Meta, so for now, just know that the version that I'm using is 2022, the 3.14 and everything works. They also require that you have the Oculus integration SDK 47. I ended up just installing the latest version of Oculus integration as of today, so I recommend that you do that as well. By the time that this gets to production, there might be a different version, so I will add all that information in the description of this video so you guys have that information ready. And then the Oculus XR provider is going to be needed, and also the Oculus backend, which is going to be using the OpenXR backend of the Oculus XR provider. So just make sure that you have that in mind. If you want this project, I can check it in, just let me know, and you guys can use that as an example as well. And then they also support Haptic SDK for Unreal. I'm not gonna go over that, but just know that that's also available. So the next thing that I'm gonna do though, is if we go in here and then we download this component, which is going to be the SDK, you can download it and then extract it. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And in your case, you might have a production version, which this is going to be dropping. So just know that that's going to be the difference between this version and the one that you get. And then just click in, you know, click on next. It's going to extract it. Once it finishes extracting, we're gonna be just dragging that folder and then dropping that under my assets folder. So once it finishes, we can start working on that Unity part. So there's gonna be a couple of things that I wanna do. I want to grab a couple of different audio files that they have already in here. And then we're gonna go through and basically converting them to haptic files so that we can import them into Unity. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I go here to the audio, you're gonna see that we have this multi-toy, right? The multi-toy is going to be, it's gonna be this gun here that looks pretty spacey-like kind of gun. I also added a, basically a logger in here that we can basically write to this log every time I play a haptic file. That way you guys know that I'm playing a haptic file and because you cannot feel it, at least you can see that is doing that. So that's what the logger is going to be doing. So if you go to multi-toy and we play some of these ones, so that's when you're absorbing a ball and then there's also multiple. <laughs> that one is cool. And there's a couple of them in here, like when you open a portal and when you close a portal, that's going to be when you're actually opening the portal to the virtual world versus the physical world. So it has to do with the actual OVR pass-through layers. And then there's other ones in here. So next we're gonna go into Meta Haptic Studio. Just go ahead and click on your project. We're gonna tell it what destination it's going to be, where we have all of our audio files. I'm gonna select all the ones that I want to import into Unity. Just click on open. And before you import them into Unity, you need to analyze them, right? This is where you're going to start looking at each one of them and then looking at the amplitude, looking at the frequency, looking at the emphasis points. So you can basically go through all of these ones and start looking at what looks good to you. So let's go ahead and look at, for instance, this one, right? The amplitude, it's kind of low. It's about 40%, a little less than 40%. And then we have a higher frequency in here. So if I were to press Y on my controller, I can start testing that. So it's opening the portal. And then I can do close. And I can extend here the timeline so we can see the whole thing. So let's say I go to open and I wanna have more gain because this is, a, this is an experience that I really want it to stand out. I want the immersion to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the gain. Try it again. I see, I feel the motor a lot more. Oh yeah, now I feel those vibrations that are very, very strong. You can also change the resolution here. I can also increment the resolution. Maybe the gain is too, is too high, right? Okay, how about the sensitivity? I wanted to have more sensitivity. So I feel more basically emphasis points 
through uh, the vibration. So let's say that I'm happy with the results. I think this is perfect. I talked to my designer. We both agree on it. We're going to basically ship this. Well, ship it to the actual Unity project before we ship it to production. And then the next thing that I do is go into Save As, and then you're going to be creating basically your haptic project. So there's going to be any name. In my case, I'm going to call it the World Beyond, just the name of the project. And then I think I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, export everything. I'm going to right click on it. And then I would imagine there would be an export here, but there isn't. So I'm just going to click on export and add that as a feature request for Meta. And then it's going to tell you here what the, the format is going to be. I think waveform is more of a standard across the industry. Haptic is just the format that Meta is using. So we're just going to go ahead and select that. And then once you do that, it's going to tell you where you want to save those files. What I'm going to do though, is instead of putting them in here, actually we could put them in there and then just create a new folder. We can just say exports. And then let's say that this is going to be the export of these, you know, these files. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then we can minimize this. We don't need to, we don't need to look at any of those just yet. And then what I'm going to do though, is for now, we're going to go ahead and put them in a directory in here. It doesn't matter where you put them. I'm going to put it on the resources. It looks like I already have some haptic files in there. So I'm going to go ahead and delete them. And then just we can just load them. Normally resources, resources are for things that you want to dynamically load. Like in this case, I was going to dynamically load those from resources, but that's probably not a good idea. I'm still going to do it just to show you a demo. But normally what I would recommend to do is going to be what I'm going to show you in the script. So there's going to be two different ways that I'm going to do it today. The first way is going to be the one that I recommend. The second way is just for me to be able to load them all. So I'm going to go into haptics here and then we can go into my directory and don't open that file. I'm going to open the actually grab all the haptic files that we have under the exports and then drag them and drop them into Unity. And you can see that these are all scriptable objects that, you know, Unity that Meta created. And they just have basically, it's a JSON file, so you can open them and then check them out. We don't need to do that, to be honest. But what we can do though is now we're going to start, you know, looking at how we can integrate this into Unity. So what I'm going to do is right now I have the SDK because we brought in that SDK. We have to create a new manager. In this case, I'm going to create a new manager and I'm going to call it the haptics. We can just say haptics manager. And this really depends on the game that you're building. In my case, I'm just going to do something similar to an audio manager, but it's going to be taking a clip and the clip is going to be the files that we exported into the resources folder. So we have that. Just go ahead and double click it. I'm going to open that up. And then what I'm going to do while that's loading though, is I'm going to go ahead and add it to this game object. And we can just say it's going to be holding the haptics manager. Just know that if you go to the player, there's going to be an amplitude scale that you can set from a zero to a one. There is also a frequency, a frequency shift that you can also change. This one is going to go from negative one to a one. So, and there's also going to be its looping. So if you want to have vibrations that are going to be looping, you can also do that. All right, so the next thing that we need to do though is we need to associate the haptics manager haptics clips just to make sure that they're going to play so we can go here on their haptics and i know that the open is going to be assigned to that and then close is going to be assigned to that and then this first one i believe it's going to be the portal beam so make sure that you assign that and then now this is not going to do anything yet because we haven't really called into play so one thing that we can do though is I can search for this and then I know that that's been played from another class so we can just go ahead and go into that.
right guys, I hope you enjoy this video by using the new Meta Haptics SDK, also the companion app, and also the studio. If you guys have any questions about anything that I show you today, please let me know in the comments, and also consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell, because that's going to allow me to bring you a lot more videos. Thank you very much, guys.